This is Ralph, and today we're going to talk about how to find a world-class mentor. Regardless of your area of endeavor, you need a mentor. We all do. Whoever said experience is the best teacher doesn't know what they're talking about, because experience, while it's a teacher, definitely isn't the best one. Why wouldn't you leverage someone or a group of people who have been there, who've done that, who have the experience? They can help you see around corners, share with you what to anticipate, what to avoid, the mistakes they've made, the money they've lost, what they would do over again if they had the advice they're giving you when they got started. That's the way to go through life. And personally, I don't do anything without a mentor. And I thought it's about time since we spend a lot of time on social media, YouTube especially, basically looking for advice from other people, which is directly or indirectly looking for mentorship. So let's go ahead and get right to it and understand how to find someone to help you get from where you are to where you ideally want to be. Now, first, let's define a mentor. Now, a mentor, and this may have been Merriam-Webster, forgot exactly where I got the definition, to be honest with you, but it is a trusted counselor or guide. And that's what we need in our lives. We don't need people who sometimes act like they know what they're talking about. We need people that actually know what they're talking about. And I've experienced many times in my life where I've taken advice from people who didn't know at all what they were doing. They thought they knew and they just felt like sharing their thoughts, but they didn't have the experience to go with it. And there were times that I acted on it and paid the price. But that's because they weren't trusted. They weren't someone that I considered a counselor or a guide because, number one, I have to take responsibility in the fact that I didn't verify what they were telling me before I took action on it. But now that, again, I'm a little older, a little wiser, I know how to evaluate and really make sure that I know who I'm dealing with before I take their advice. Because there's lots of people, as we well know, who have a lot of opinions, but very few of them have the pedigree to back it up. So understanding what a mentor is and the fact that they need to be trusted and they need to be somebody that can counsel you and that can guide you uh, is really important in any relationship that you build with someone to help you accomplish what you set out to accomplish. Now, let's keep a few things in mind. First of all, the potential mentor you admire is very busy. So going into that, you need to understand that there may be people that you want to work with or you want to get some advice and counsel from. You want them to kind of walk with you through the journey that you're taking. And maybe they have the heart to do so, but just don't have the time. There are some people, and I've run into this as well, who they don't have the heart or the time. Or some people have the time, but they just don't have the heart to. They don't really want to spend time pouring into other people. And, you know, that's unfortunate, but that's just something that, you know, comes along with reaching out to people who are at a higher level than you are, regardless of what it is you're focused on. There are just some people who have done what it takes to get where they are, but they don't really have a heart to give back. And that's something that you have to keep in mind. Don't let it deter you or frustrate you. Just know that you may possibly run into someone that, you know, feels that way and sometimes almost feel bad for the fact that you admired them in the first place, which has definitely happened to me. Now, a mentor-mentee relationship doesn't have to be formal. I don't have to sit with someone and say, hey, I would like for you to mentor me, have them say, okay, I agree to mentor you, and then you go ahead and go down the path. Because I am mentored currently by people that I've never met. Of course, there's people in my life who I do have a close relationship with, but I take a lot of uh, lots of advice and counsel from people that I've never met, people whose names I you know, could mention here that I buy their books, I watch their videos, I've attended their conferences and seminars, and although they wouldn't know me you know, from Adam, they are people that I trust and who have guided me to varying degrees of success in my personal, spiritual, and professional life. So it's really more about whether or not you take action on what you learn than it is having some type of formal arrangement as to whether or not somebody is mentoring you. There will be people that you know and there will be people that you don't know who can be wonderful mentors and you need to be open to that as well. And you're already being mentored. There are people who speak into your life and you make decisions based on the information that they share with you, whether it's spiritually based, relationships, fitness, money, doesn't matter what it is, there's somebody in your life that's speaking into your life and the first thing you want to do before you pursue any type of uh, broader scale mentorship is to evaluate your current relationships and to ask yourself if you're happy with what you're learning, if you're happy with the results, if 
the people who have been pouring into your life are helping you move forward or if they're just dumping their garbage into your life and you're taking action based on that. So doing an inventory is very important in deciding, you know, do I really understand how to differentiate good advice from bad advice, differentiate opinion from fact, because there's people that will give you their opinions, but it's not backed up by anything other than their feelings. And I've got my own feelings. I don't need anyone else's feelings in my life. So this is an exercise that I think you should really take seriously because it's going to help sharpen your discernment. Because there may be someone, back to my previous point, that you may admire them, and then once you start to fellowship with them, speak with them, you may realize, whoa, wait a minute, you know, I, I admired what I saw. Maybe that was just the carefully curated content that they had on YouTube or that I heard from the pulpit or in speeches. But now that we're kind of, you know, walking together a little bit, I don't really think I like, you know, working with this person or they're not who I thought they were. But you have to have discernment in your life to be able to understand whether or not there are relationships you should embrace or relationships that you should walk away from. Because, again, when you are being poured into, you're going to take action based on that. And the person pouring into you isn't responsible. You're responsible for living with the consequences or benefits that you get based on the advice that you have taken. So that's something that you really should keep in mind as you start to move forward with this. Now, the first step is to set clear objectives, not for the person mentoring you, but for you. Because people who are busy, people who have achieved a lot in life, they don't have time to help you try to figure out whether you're going or coming. They don't have time to help you kind of clarify your life. They are, generally speaking, subject matter experts. You admire someone who seems to be very healthy and fit based on their appearance, their athletic pedigree, uh, you know, regardless of what it is. So if you go to them asking for fitness advice, let's say, but you don't have any fitness goals, you know, they're, they're busy people, whether they're mentoring other people, whether they have a business in that space, or if they're just living their lives, they don't have time to help you figure all of that out. So you need to know what your goals and what your objectives are up front. So at least you can give the person whose time you're asking for a track to run on to be able to help you and give you specific targeted advice that's actually going to help you move forward. Find out where you are, get clarity on that, and there'll be things you can do on your own to make sure that you're in position to be ready to receive from someone that's looking to pour into your life. And finally, identify the specific things that you want to learn. People who have achieved a lot in life, they're generally very tight with their time. They're fastidious with their time. They don't mind sharing their time, but they're not going to let you waste it. And having that position, having that frame of mind is probably what helped them achieve what they've achieved, you know, in the first place. Now, what you can do, as I mentioned previously, is to study existing resources. Do they have books? Do they have courses, seminars, workshops, things of that sort that you can use to really begin to take action and start to build momentum towards achieving your goal? Because in a lot of cases, if there's someone that you meet who is published who does a lot of public speaking, they're going to ask you what you thought about their book or what you thought about their course or their uh, their workshops or masterminds or whatever it is. And if you're not able to respond to them in the affirmative that you've taken action on something that they've already produced, then they're going to kind of look at you like, OK, you admire me. You're asking for my help, but you haven't even read my book or you haven't even been to any of my my workshops, you haven't studied my video and taken action. Because as part of what they produce, they're going to be looking for validation of their tools and methods. Now, maybe they've gotten it from other people, but if you're asking for a close relationship with them, you're asking them to mentor you, to coach you, to guide you, they're going to want to know what results you've gotten from what they've already produced. And they're not going to waste time teaching you something that they already put in a book. So you need to be mindful of that. You can, as sort of a second level tactic, look at the people that they admire. Um, that's one of the things that I do very carefully. There are some people that I highly admire, some that I've met, some that I haven't. And I'll go on their Instagram or I'll look on their website, their Facebook, wherever. And I look at who they're studying. And I go buy those books, I watch those videos, I consume that content, 
Because if that's who's pouring into the person that I admire, then there's a very strong likelihood that I can learn a lot from them as well. And there may be enough to keep you very busy for a very long time just in taking action on the information that they're learning from the people that they admire, which is probably a lot of the information they would pour into you if you ended up having a relationship with them. So that's something that you may want to consider and prepare specific questions in advance. So if you have something that you're looking for a mentor to help you with, prepare in advance, but in between the time you prepare the question and you meet him or her, start looking for the answer. Start finding a way to solve problems, to address questions in your life and business or whatever area of focus. And you may find that you're able to you know, move the ball forward and ask bigger questions, ask more detailed questions, ask tougher questions of yourself until you get to a point where you actually do achieve a bottleneck or you hit a ceiling, you hit a wall where, okay, I truly have done everything I can to feed myself, so to speak, but I can't get past this point. This is where I need somebody who's really polished, experienced, sharp, who has some results to help me get to the next level. But if you don't ask questions in advance, you could end up wasting an opportunity with someone uh, who is willing to help you, but then you bring something to them that they really shouldn't be helping you with. It's something that you could have solved yourself. Now, here is something that I think people really need to understand because I've made this mistake. I've seen other people make this mistake. You want what people know, not what they have. Don't go to someone of influence and ask them, can you invest $50,000 into my business? Can you become a partner? Can you do this for me? Can you do that for me? Because even if they agree to do it, which they probably won't, once that transaction is complete, you're back to square one. But if you have what they know, then you can rinse and repeat that over and over and over again. Okay, seek advice and insights from these people. Don't ask for material benefit because if they're successful, they're, that's happening to them all the time. People are always pulling on their coattails, asking them for stuff. People are always coming up to them looking for a loan or an investment or, you know, it, it happens to them every day, uh, especially if they're notable. Because people see, you know, the glow up and they want a piece of the action. But the right way to do it is to learn from these people so you're able to, you know, if they, what's the saying? If you give a man a fish, he eats for a day. If you teach him to fish, he eats for a lifetime. You want to learn how to fish from these people. And it's also a way to begin to separate yourself from the crowd. Because, again, people are sending them letters, emailing them, DMing them, coming up to them asking for stuff. Every five minutes they got their hand out, they're shaking the cup instead of trying to learn what they know so they can support themselves, so they can grow and be self-sufficient. So you want to tap into their expertise, their experience. One of the most valuable things you can do, which I've learned, is ask people how they did what they did. Because the sweetest voice that anyone can hear is their own. So if you sincerely and genuinely, not being disingenuous, but if you sincerely want to know how someone made it. Tell me your, your your story. How did you go from the outhouse to the penthouse? How did you go from where you started to where you are today? Tell me your story. People, you would be surprised at how many people will take time to really tell you their story because, again, people are usually asking them for stuff and it's not often that they get to express themselves and go through the journey that's helped them to go from where they started to where they are currently. And that's going to be something that people appreciate. And offer value in return. Another approach you can take with a mentor is to say, how can I help you do what you do? If they have a product or service, you know, ask them if they have an affiliate program to where you can promote their products. You can help them generate business. You know, what can I do for you? And intrinsically, people are going to feel a sense of... Um, I don't want to say, um, you know, like they owe you or accountability, but they're just going to feel like they want to repay you that you did something for me. You didn't ask for anything in return. So you know, automatically, I kind of feel like, you know, I'm willing to help this person. I'm much more open to doing something for them because they served me first. They weren't just looking to get from me. They actually brought something to the table instead of asking for something. And now reciprocity kicks in. 
So focus on what people know, not what they have, because if you focus on what they have and you try to get that from them, you're going to look like everyone else and the answer is almost certainly going to be no. Have some receipts. That's step four. You want to make sure that you bring something to the table that you've done. Don't just sit around and make excuses and complain about what you don't have. Take action. Do everything you possibly can and demonstrate a propensity for action. You know, show that when someone gives you a piece of advice that you take it. This is another mistake that I've made when I was in sales. I remember on more than one occasion going to one of the top producers that was making a few million dollars a year and was wearing the $5,000 suits and driving the Mercedes, had the beach house, flying first class, you know, all that kind of stuff. All the things where when you're young and broke and you're wearing a cheap suit and it's the only suit you have or maybe one of two and you're trying to put as many combinations together so it doesn't look like you're wearing the same thing, but everybody knows you're wearing the same thing. Like at that stage of my life, I would go to a top producer and there were, I remember one in particular who was very nice, very gracious, took me out to lunch, a nice lunch, paid for it, spent an hour and a half with me. And then after that conversation, I stopped in his office, I don't know, it was maybe two or three months later and asked him a question and, and he called me on it not not maliciously or being mean it's like well you know i spent almost two hours with you at the beginning of the year you know what action have you taken on what i already told you to do and i think with the particular question i asked if i remember correctly it's like if you had done what i had recommended to you in the beginning you wouldn't be dealing with this bottleneck right now ouch but listen there was nothing i could say because i didn't take action on what i was told before Again, successful people, if you're hungry, if you're willing to fight, if you're willing to work, if you're, you, you show some, some hustle, they will bend over backwards to help you because that's something that's attractive to them. They feel like their time is being invested rather than spent. But if you don't have a propensity for action, you're going to turn people off. And that's something that you need to show to someone that you want to mentor you that you're willing to take action and that you're not like everyone else who just makes excuses and talks about the economy and, you know, well, the economy is bad. That's why my sales aren't where they should be or inflation. People aren't spending as much money. It's like, stop. Like, like no one's buying that because the economy is cyclical. OK, there are times of feast. There are times of famine. There are times of high inflation and low inflation. There are times of high interest rates and low interest rates. Like it's, it's a cycle. So they've been through all of the excuses that you're talking about. And they're just not trying to hear it because if they overcame it, you can as well. No matter how small the achievements are, bring something to the table just to show them that you're willing to take action, which I kind of already touched on. And everything's not going to be perfect. you got to be resourceful. You've got to shake trees. you got to figure it out. As Marie Forleo said in her famous book, everything is figure outable. And, and that's true. There are going to be times where you just have to make it happen. You know, you're going to start with nothing or very little, and you got to just do the best you can with what you have right where you are right now. And when people see that in you, they'll be much more willing to work with you and help you out because they already see that, you know, you've got a little moxie to you and you're willing to do what you need to do in order to be successful. And people like that. The next thing you want to do is ask for help with real issues. And what I mean by that is there are things that are pretty basic that someone who's highly successful isn't going to waste time on. So if you're looking to start a business and you go to a mentor who's a millionaire, multimillionaire, billionaire, whoever it is, somebody who's really in the top 1% of their field, and let's say, for example, that you want to start a business or you want to grow your business, whatever it is. And you're asking them what an LLC is like, like they don't have time for that. You can go on any website. You can go to the small business administration site here in the States. You can go to your local chamber of commerce. There are so many places that you can go to figure out things like that. I'm not saying it's not important, but if someone who is substantially successful gives you their time, you need to treat it with the level of value and respect that that deserves. You're not putting them on a pedestal, but you know, you got your one shot and you're asking something so basic when you should be asking them questions that help you grow, help you scale, help you go to the next level, help you expand, help you 
uh, multiply the results that you've already achieved in business. Don't ask them small, silly stuff. Those are the things that you need to master on your own. So when you do get that shot, you're using it for something that's really going to move the needle and help you go to the next level. And you need to be prepared to answer specific questions. So again, we'll use a business example. If you're selling t-shirts and you know they ask you about your business, you ought to be able to tell them about your business. You should be able to give them insights into what you do, how you do it, why you decided to get into that particular business, you know what your future plans are. And even if your plans are out of whack uh, and, and they know based on their experience, it probably won't work. At least you sat down to make some plans because it will shock you how many people profess to be serious about something, but they don't have goals. Or if they have goals, well, they think they have goals, they're not in writing. And they're like, well, I don't need to write it down. I know what I need to do. No, if you're not willing to take the $1,000 phone out of your pocket, which we all have, or pick up you know, a, a journal and, and, and a pen and write down your goals and write down your vision and your plans, if that's too inconvenient for you, if that's too much work for you, then you're not serious. You're just playing games. And again, those folks don't have time to play games. And you have to know your numbers and your metrics. If someone says, okay, you're selling t-shirts, how much does it cost you to make? And you say, um, around, um, probably about, um, I mean, it kind of goes up and down. All you're doing is telling them you don't know your numbers. It costs me 50 cents to make one. I sell one for a dollar. So my gross margin is 50%. My net margin after all expenses is whatever, 35%. That's a specific number that shows that your finger is on the pulse of what you're saying is important, what you interrupted them for. OK, so if you don't know your numbers and you're stuttering and stammering or if you're in the restaurant business and you know they ask you about an entree. So how much is, is this dish? Well, um, you know, seafood prices went up. So it's kind of this. And then you're just going through this long, rambling nonsensical explanation all that's going to tell them just like it would tell me is they don't know their numbers they're not serious and if they don't know something as basic as how much it costs them to make that plate then i'm out <laughs> that's not something that i'm going to spend time on because i want to help people grow i want to help people scale i want to help give them insights to help them do greater things i'm not here to teach and wipe their nose and and help them solve simple things that if they'd done a little bit of research in this technology age with AI and the internet and everything else, they would have already, or shoot, just watch Shark Tank. And you'll already know that you ought to know how much it costs you to make one and what you sell it for so you understand your margins. Same thing with fitness or with any other you know element of your life. What specifically are you looking to accomplish and where are you right now? And when you have that level of clarity and you say it with certainty or like when I was growing up, my older brother used to say, you know, say it with your chest, you know, say it like you mean it. When you're able to say it with certainty and you come across as confident, like you're ready to stand on business, as, as folks like to say, then that's going to be attractive to people. And they're going to ask you more questions and, you know, possibly decide to, you know, help you move forward because, again, you're separating yourself by being prepared and knowing what you're talking about. And that goes a long way with successful people. Now, step six, you want to express gratitude. And here are some things that you really need to think about. So you want to be, no matter what happens, whether they decide to work with you or not, or even if it's just an initial introduction, you know, show appreciation. So show thanks, show, show gratitude. If you get a piece of advice from them, report back to them on that advice, send them a letter. Thank you very much for sharing this particular tip with me. I took action. I did it for the past three months, and it's impacted my business this way. I used to weigh this amount, but I took your fitness advice. I took your nutritional advice, and now I'm in the best shape of my life where I'm getting in shape, or I feel stronger, I feel better, uh, or you know, I've started to pray. I've started to read, you know, my Bible more and, you know, really just focus on growing spiritually and I can see the difference in my life. Report back to people so they know that they didn't, that you didn't waste time um, and that you're action oriented, because again, that's something that's going to be very important to people. And they'll be much more likely to, you know, share more information with you if you've taken the advice once you've given it to them. And this is a big one, okay? Don't miss this. If you're reaching out to people who have staff, 
you need to be mindful of staff members and gatekeepers. When I was in sales full time, let me tell you, if I'm trying to call and get a hold of a doctor or a C-level executive, they 99.9% .9 of the time have an executive assistant or some other staff person that takes all of the calls and opens their mail and triages everything to make sure that only the most important things get to them. Don't just blow by them and treat them like you know, they're, they're in your way or they're a bottleneck to the person that you're trying to get to. You need to respect them. You need to build a rapport with them. You need to show them that you appreciate them because, you know, they're not just there to answer the phone and, and make lunch reservations. They have other responsibilities. And one thing I've learned that I'll share with you with high level, high performers, high level executives is that when they find somebody that gets them, that understands their quirks, can help them see around corners a little bit, knows their way and how they like to do things, they typically keep them for a very long time. It will not be uncommon to find someone who's progressed in business or any area of life, ministry, doesn't matter where, who's had the same executive assistant or staff person for 20 or 30 years. Because that's the kind of, they need consistency. They need to be able to focus on what's in their zone of genius, focus on their God-given purpose. And if they have someone that can help them do that, they tend to keep them and treat them very well. And you better act like it, okay? Because if you get on their bad side, you're not going to get any grace. They're not going to give you any flexibility. They're not going to help you at all. But if you treat them right, genuinely, not, not trying to manipulate or, or, or whip a game on them, but if you treat them well, a lot of times they'll, you know, grease the wheel for you. They'll bend over backwards for you. They'll, they'll put in a good word for you. They'll let your call or your email go through because I promise you it's being filtered by them. When you go to, if you happen to get through and meet with someone, take a $10 Starbucks gift. And I've done this. Take a $10 Starbucks gift card and give it to them and say, listen, you know, I I know you get a million calls with people calling, selling stuff, trying to get just a few minutes here and just a few minutes there with, you know, whoever this person is. And I just want to let you know, I really appreciate it because, you know, I, I know you're swamped. And let me tell you, the fact that you took the time to remember them and you weren't just focused on who you're trying to get to, I can't begin to tell you how many times I've been blessed by that. You know, people that generally don't take calls, don't take lunch appointments, but they happen to put in a good word for, you know, he was very nice or this. And they, well, OK, I'll I'll listen to him because they trust that person because they've had a relationship that has lasted so long. So you need to make sure that you're mindful of staff members and gatekeepers, because, again, if you blow them off, you're the one that's going to pay for it because they will not extend any grace or any latitude or flexibility to you whatsoever. And please be gracious no matter what. You know, there's going to be times where, again, the answer is no, and you just need to be professional and just accept that the answer is no. Now, don't let that stop you. Just understand that, you know, this this is a no, that this person does not want to spend any time with me or mentor me or give me advice or help me or, or do whatever it is that you're asking for them to do. Now, you can still add value anyway. You don't want to create the impression that it was a quid pro quo, that you're doing things just for what you can get. You know, if you made a commitment to do something, then follow through with that. That doesn't mean you have to renew the commitment. But if you said you were going to do something, you need to go ahead and follow through with that because that's representative of your name and your brand. And you're not going to go anywhere in this world without a good name uh, and, you know, a good brand that you're trying to build that people think favorably of and can trust, you know, the, the book of Proverbs, it says that a good name is to be treasured above great riches because the likelihood is you're not going to have great riches without a good name. Sometimes it happens, but rarely does it last. So you want to make sure no matter what, that you have a good name. And again, things aren't always going to go your way, but you don't sacrifice your name as a means of getting even with someone or you know, becoming childish and petulant and throwing a hissy fit because, you know, someone just decided not to work with you. And maybe the no is not right now, maybe down the road. If you keep working, you keep doing the things that you need to do, and then you come in contact with that person later, and maybe you're in a different place and they're in a different place, and then they're willing to help you. 
But if you throw a fit and act a fool, then the answer is always going to be no. And then that word is going to spread and you don't want that. If any word spreads about your name, you want it to be something positive. Not that you, you know, fell out on the floor like a baby because someone told you no and you were praising them and talking about how much you admire them. But then as soon as they tell you no, then you're on social media trashing them. OK, don't be soft. Be a professional. And here's the bonus tip. Accept the fact that you may have to pay. And what I mean by that is if someone has produced a book, produced a mastermind, a course, a seminar, a workshop, again, they're, they're very, very careful about their time. So a lot of what you may be wanting to learn from them, you could learn as part of those activities. And they're not going to pay, excuse me, they're not going to spend the time to teach something twice when they've already formulated it inside of a program. I've spent and continue to spend heavily on advice, guidance, counsel, wisdom. And a lot of times, if it's really quality stuff, you can take the information that they've shared with you and, you know, get a return on that investment over and over and over with them. And a lot of times high achievers have what are called value ladders to where you may start off working with them at a very low cost or even free by consuming some of their what's called low ticket content. So let's say that's, I'm just making up a number, uh, $10. And then the next thing in their value ladder is $50. And then maybe it's $250 and 500 and 5,000 and 10,000. I mean, I've spent on workshops and seminars upwards of $15,000 at the top of someone's value ladder to learn valuable information to help me do what I do. And a lot of times the higher you ascend up the value ladder, the closer you get to the individual and the more time you get with them. And that may be another way to formulate a relationship. So don't expect or anticipate that it's always going to be free, that just because you knock on the door and ask, they're going to, you know, spit their lunch out and stop what they're doing to work with you. No, sometimes you got to pay to play. But again, if you're action oriented, then those actions should make that more of an investment that generates a return rather than a cost, which is the mindset that unfortunately a lot of people have. Everything is a cost. You know, how much? All they want to hear is the number. And if the number is higher than what they want to hear, the brain shuts off. You don't want to be that kind of person. You want to be a value person who's willing to invest. And if you have that mindset, then paying for higher ticket ticket things, you know, won't be a problem in the future. Okay. And make it a win-win. Another way you can perhaps get someone's time and attention is learn about them. If they love golf, invite them out for golf. I can't tell you how many times, you know, I've called people over and over and over again when I, when I was in sales and you can't get them for 30 minutes uh, for lunch, but four hours for golf, all you, yeah, they can squeeze that in. You know, so because they're passionate about it. So it's not that they didn't have the time. It's that there wasn't, you know, enough of an incentive for them to give you the time. So, you know, if they're interested in golf or their favorite football team is hopefully the Philadelphia Eagles, then buy tickets and invite them to a game. You know, hey, listen, I know we haven't been able to catch up for lunch or golf or tennis or whatever it is you're into. I have an extra ticket to the game on Sunday. Would you like to go? And that may be a way to get four hours when you couldn't get one hour with someone. So find ways to make it a win-win. And again, that comes with a servant mindset of how can I help you? Instead of asking uh, exclusively about what you can get from them, if you're willing to give something to them, that can help you generate access. And for most people, when they ask you to invest in their course or you know purchase a product or service they have, not only do they want to avoid teaching the same thing over and over again, but, you know, when they've already recorded it or turned it into some kind of paid program, but they also want to test your level of commitment because if you're not willing to invest in yourself, then why am I going to stop what I'm doing and take time away from what I'm focused on to invest in you when you won't invest in yourself, when reaching in your own pocket for your benefit, oh, you know, oh, that costs too much, that's too expensive, They're, you're going to be tested. That's just how that goes, especially the higher up the person is that you're looking to to learn from. So um, I hope this has been valuable to you. I just want to share some fi final thoughts that if you want to soar with the Eagles, you can't act like a buzzard. OK, 
You need to do the things to make yourself better, make yourself sharper, to be the professional that you need to be. And again, this isn't just about business. Whatever endeavor you're looking for a mentor in, you need to do your best to be the best person you could possibly be because there's levels to this thing. People who are highly successful, generally speaking, not always, but generally speaking, they speak differently. They move differently. You can tell that they've they've been through some things. They've paid the price. They've been through the fire. And they're just not going to be around any kind of people. That's just not how they move. You know, there's levels to this. And you need to make sure that you're doing what you can to be at that level. And again, don't sell out. Don't sell your integrity. Don't be fake. Don't be phony. Just be polished. Just be mature. Just develop. Just grow. And you'll find that you become more attractive to the people you want to be around than maybe you anticipated. But you have to put in the work to separate yourself from people who are just asking for stuff. Prepare to play the long game. As I said previously, maybe it's a no or a not right now. Stay focused. Keep your head down. If it's a dream and a passion and something you're really focused on, if it's your God-given purpose, there's plenty that you have to do to keep you busy to where the long game won't feel so long. And if you're determined you will succeed, mentor or not, if everyone you admire tells you no, troubleshoot that. There may be something that you're doing that's repelling those folks. But if not, listen, put your head down, keep your hand in God's hand and you plant the right seed. You will get the right harvest. So listen, if I can be helpful in some capacity I offer one to one coaching. And if you're serious about mentorship, about growing in your business, about kingdom business and kingdom business made simple, then go ahead and uh, use the link on your screen to apply for one-to-one coaching. And hopefully we're a good fit with each other and um, I could be of some value to help you accomplish what you're looking to accomplish. So once again, this is Ralph. Thanks very much for tuning in. Uh, If you've lasted this long here in this video, I really appreciate it. If you're new or returning uh, visitor and you haven't subscribed yet, please consider it as well as giving this video a like and sharing with someone you know. And once again, always remember that faith plus works equals success. You have to put in the work. All right, God bless, and I'll see you soon. Take care.